know where the 4-H club is? Um, Good evening, welcome to the Daniel Boone Area School District voting meeting for June 18th. If we could all rise, please, and pledge the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Wolf, you do uh, roll call, please. Yes, Mr. Rapkin. Ms. Albright? Here. Mr. Miller? Here. Mr. Dursa? Mr. Strobel? He just clear. Okay. Mr. D. Scott? Here. Mr. Wolf here. Mr. J. Scott? Here. Ms. Olson? Here. Mr. Rapkin? Here. Be present. Let the record show that Mr. Strubble is here via telephone this evening. Alrighty. Um, we have several agenda edits. Uh, you'll see there's a few pages that are added to your agenda. Um, are there any other agenda edits? that we need to be aware of. You got them all in? Okay. All right. Uh, public participation is listed on the inside of your agenda cover. You'll have three minutes to speak when you come up. Just your name, address. Um, there will be a uh, executive session after the meeting to go over some negotiations items. Do we have another call in? I don't think yeah? so. Okay. Um, so, the um, way the uh, agenda reads right now, um, Mr. Thompson was going to have a presentation for us on uh, BEC masonry um, and some of the options we have. If I could in indulge Mr. Thompson uh, for a few minutes, if we can switch things around a little bit. Um, Mrs. Olson was kind enough to come in tonight to the meeting. Her family is already en route or down in Virginia. So, yeah, well, I gotta make you sound good. Gotta make you sound good. Uh, so, we appreciate her coming in uh, so we can get the voting taken care of and get her on her way so she can actually go to vacation. I think that would be, that would be a better, better way to approve things. Now that I've embarrassed you, Mrs. Olson. <laughs> no, we. Do do uh, do appreciate you coming in. Frankly, uh, I said if it was me, I would I would have just called in. I would have I would have gone. So so if that's okay with you, Mr. Thompson, if we switch things around a little bit. Okay, thank you. Um, so um, presentations by public on any of the agenda items. Alrighty, then um, first uh, item. Up for bid is our consent agenda, item 7A through 7AY, which would take us to the bottom of page four. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Mr. Wolf moves. Mrs. Olson seconds. Mr. Wolf, would you mind reading your disclosure? Items 7A through 7AY present on the consent agenda will be adopted unless I hear arguments to the contrary. Motion passes. Okay. That brings us up to the top of page 5. Uh, programs, not, uh, 8A. I have a motion for the MOA between DBEA and the district. So moved. Moved by Mr. Scott J. Second, please. Second. Mrs. Olson. Roll call vote, Mr. Wolf, please. I'm oh, sorry, any discussion? Okay. Roll call vote, Mr. Wolf. Mr. Miller? Uh, yes. Mr. Strobel? Yes. Mr. B. Scott? Yes. Mr. Wolf? Yes. Mr. J. Scott? Yes. Ms. Olson? Yes. 
Ms. Sol uh, Ms. Albright. Yes. Mr. Rapkin. Yes. Motion passes a zero. Okay. Uh, moving on to item uh, nine. Um, I, I I did have uh, I did have them break out uh, item C. I, I I figured that would probably be the easiest way to do that. I don't think there's much um, issues on items A or B one through B four. Um, so I would think maybe we'll take a motion for items A, B one through four. Second. Mr. J. Scott moves. Mr. B. Scott seconds. Any discussion on those items? Who, uh, who was the first? Uh, J. Scott. Yeah, B. Scott. Yep. B. Scott. No second. Uh, roll call vote, Mr. Wolf. Yes, Mr. Rapp. Yeah. Mr. Strobel. Yes. Mr. B. Scott. Yes. Mr. Wolf. Yes. Mr. J. Scott. Yes. Ms. Olson. Yes. Ms. Albright. Yes. Mr. Miller. Yes. Mr. Rabbit. Yes. Motion passes 8-0. All right. Uh, item 9C is uh, a motion to uh, approve our new millage. Uh, you'll see the amount entered is um, 30.83, which is an increase of 0.63 mils. Is that correct, uh, Mrs. Haynes? Yes. Okay. Percentage. Uh, so our current millage is 30.2. It's going up to, we have a, this motion up to 30.83. 2.1, which is the CPI. Okay. So, um, is there a motion for that? Um, oh, we can make motion, motion first, and then we can first. comment. Yep. I'll make a motion. Mr. Wolf, second. Second. Second by Mr. B. Scott. That discussion. Okay. Um, just want to raise a concern. I know we had originally pegged the budget at, at the index, which was thirty-one point one six mills, and by the going with the CPI rate, we're reducing it by five hundred, by three hundred fifty-seven thousand dollars. I'm just concerned with where we are. It's coming out of fund balance. Just taking a fund that balance down by about 22%. And where we're projected to be in the next couple of years, I just I think it is not prudent to take everything out of the budget. There, there are comments? Okay. Is he making a motion to be acted on? Well, we have already a motion on the floor. Well, yeah. we table motion to table. If he has an alternate motion. <clears throat> I mean, is, is there anyone else on the? Anyone else feel like we should change the number? Just roll call vote. We'll see what we get. And if we don't get enough, then we'll change it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to. <laughs> Mr. Strobel. Mr. Strobel. Yes. Mr. B. Scott. Yes. Mr. Wolf. Yes. Mr. J. Scott. Yes. Ms. Olson. Ms. Albright. No. Mr. Miller. No. Mr. Rapkin. Yes. So motion passes by the three. So. May, may I ask why the for those who voted no, is there any reason to make any number that you had in mind other than the process? Yeah, the, the index three. It's 31 to 166. No, I'm not advocating one way or the other. It's $114 a year in my. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I certainly understand the rationale. 
talking about where we are today. Yeah. Initially, I had a present that having asked for and the additional funding for the repair of BEC, you know, I feel, felt it was unusual that I would ask for an increase in funding then vote against the budget, so that's why I had changed my vote. Okay. Um, item 10, consent agenda items for uh, personnel. Uh, items 9A through 9D. Uh, yeah, we, is this where we're added to that? 10, hang on. Yeah, 10. 10 C 3 B. And then 12 C. 10 C 3 B. No, we're still under. Uh, oh, wait a second. I, I, I don't think. I don't. Th I think that was supposed to be 10 not 10 A through 10 B, right? Because that yeah. nine would be back. So okay. So, so this is 10 C 3 B. 10 C. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yep. We're on ten. Yeah. And ten D is. Volunteer. Um, yeah. So it'll be uh, consent items. Ten A through ten C three B, as edited. I have a motion, please. So moved. Mrs. Olson, and second, please. Second. Second, Mrs. Albright. Mr. Wolf, will you read your? Uh, so Disclosure this is for 10, 10C. 10 10A through 10, 10C3B. Okay. Items in the personnel consent agenda 10A through 10C3B will be deemed adopted unless I hear motions to the contrary. Actually, actually, my bad. That was not right. Yeah, it should have been through through C five <laughs> with with um, with uh, C three B added. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Are, are you amenable to changing your? Uh, are we leaving off ten B? Oh, okay. No, that's. That's part of five, and it? No, no. I thought I had to Okay. I was making a motion for A, A, A through D, as as amended through the uh, as edit. Amended through okay. Edit. Got it. That's what I. Intended. Are you we you, you okay with that, Mrs. Albright? You got the you, you, you knew what she was doing, right? Okay. Okay. Just just to make it official, the uh, personnel consent agenda 10A through 10D as amended. Will be deemed adopted unless I hear motions to the contrary. Yep. Hearing none, motion passes. So I, I can't. I can't handle it. Sorry, this throw me off. All right. Item item eleven under finance. A, B, and C. A, B, and C, or individually, however you want to make a motion. Uh, what about D and E? Oh, hang on. We have an edit. <laughs> so we got a, we got one edit on this page and one edit on this page. D is the MOU between us and the Penn State, the Penn, Pennsylvania State Police. And he is the SJ Thomas classroom. Yeah. Where's uh, can, can we can we just uh, I uh, I would ask if we could do 11 A through C and then tackle D okay. and E separately. Yeah. All right. So, so a Mr. J. Scott, A through C. Second, please. Second. Second by Mr. B. Scott. Um, let's see here. We got the uh, roll call vote, Mr. Wolf. Yes, Mr. Rapkett. Mr. Wolf, yes. Mr. J. Scott. Yes. Ms. Olson. Yes. Ms. Albright. Yes. Mr. Miller. Yes. Mr. Strobel. Yes. Mr. B. Scott. Yes. Mr. Rapkin. Yes. Motion passes in zero. All right. I have an item for item uh, 11D, the uh, memo, 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 memorandum of understanding with the PA State Police. So moved. Mr. Wolf moves. Second, please. I'll second. Second by Mr. Miller. Uh, discussion? 
What is it? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. Did we did we have this in place before? Yes, we've had it for years. It's. I think it was done every two years. Yes, we have it in place. We're just updating. The state police send it to us. It's for them to come onto our property and to. You you recall seeing that, Mr. Wolf? Us. I recall. You do. You do. Okay. It's been in place before. I don't know if there's been agreement. Last year, it was a two-year agreement, so they just extended it this year. So this year, it expired. Okay. Yeah, I, I was I was planning to ask Mr. Supers back because I, I didn't remember it, but uh, yeah. I mean, we can certainly table it if you don't feel comfortable with it, or you know, if Mr. Wolf says it was on there before. Uh, whatever the board wants. I mean, this is just an extension of an agreement we already have. No, no changes to the agreement. No change. It's for the state police to come into our property and to police us. It's an agreement we had, and it was every two years. Well, I'll take a motion to either um, send one more questions. I'll take a motion to either. Yeah, I look at it. It says something about jurisdiction. The police have jurisdiction. You can notify the calls for districts. That seems broader than the state police. Is that, is that accurate? I'm, I'm sorry? Basically, if something happened here at one of the Gamery school, we would have to contact the Gamery well the high school is the only school we have in the state police jurisdiction anything else we contact the well, if, you, if you read it it says if anything happens on our buses or on our way I'm like oh, well, that's right. uh, so there's a bus sitting somewhere in their not their jurisdiction yeah. well it if a high school bus has an issue we still contact the state police because it's technically our property and it's tied to the high school. In effect, the state police have jurisdiction everywhere in the state. Yeah. So it's just that the first call, I'm sure, would be to the local police, but mm -hmm. the state police back up or whoever gets there first, depending on the situation. And it depends on where it is. Depends on where it is. All right, well, I'll take a motion for anything. <laughs> well, there was a motion for 11D. We got that? We did have that? Okay, we did. All right, so, good. Okay, so roll, roll call vote, please. Mr. J. Scott? Yes. Ms. Olson? Yes. Ms. Albright? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Strobel? Yes. Mr. B. Scott? Yes. Mr. Wolf? Yes. Mr. Rathka? Yes. Motion passes 8 0. All righty. Uh, item uh, 11E. Uh, classroom painting. Uh, do I have a motion for that, please? So moved. Mr. Wolf, second, please. Second. Second, Mrs. Olson. Uh, did did I see some email going on back and forth on this? Yeah. About bonding. Okay. So that 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 covers that that uh, discussion. Okay. I need to get a buzzer. Everybody's going to sit on the bus if they don't use it. <laughs> any, uh, any other questions about our painting at the high school? I have a question about the painting requirements. Is this something that we've been out to do? Well, uh, so I gather this being part of that KPN discussion we had about the um, remodel at the high school. Uh, so similar, but not quite the same as CoStars, where pre-approved vendors so this is the same same type of program where they come in uh, in case you correct me if I'm wrong but I guess this is to try and alleviate some of the processes of going out to bid and uh, time and, and effort to do that yeah we're, we're estimated 24 rooms at this point in time it's about half of the upstairs of the high school uh, there may be less rooms as we go through them but Case we're going to do 24 rooms this, this summer. And the other part is if you remember, that part of the high school is made with drywall walls rather than block like the annex. So anytime you put any tape or anything on there, the tape comes off, part of the drywall comes off. So they're in pretty bad shape. Some of the rooms are really bad. Yeah. 
Mr. Scott, do you have a question? Yes, Mr. Scott. Did, did we, is there actually a, a discussion on this at facilities or was this kind of late, late coming? No, we discussed this and it was one of the projects that we approved uh, last week. Mr. Uh, um, Buller didn't send me the quote. I thought I'd sent it, forwarded on for inclusion, but it was in my phone, sent my drafts, so I apologize for not sending it. But yes, it was, it was discussed and it was recommended by the facilities committee. Means. And, and the other part is they are patching walls as well. They're just not going over the spots that have holes in them. So they're going to, you know, if it's just a skin coat issue, they're going to skin coat everything and then repaint. And it's also for family break, so you guys to understand it's probably $55, $65 an hour they're getting. So it doesn't take real long to time. It's $1,200 Well, so I guess the question is can we, can we hire another painter to do it? Prevailing rate is over twenty twenty five thousand dollars. So that uh, so that just because of the size of the job, we have to pay that rate no matter what. Correct. State law. State law. Department is anything over twenty five grand has to be prevailing rate. Can we do twelve rooms? <laughs> it's going to take you five years to get the upstairs done instead of two. Can do 12, 12 rooms in the summer, 12 rooms over. Uh, so now you would open up a painting clock, paint and door hardware. No, no, just schools, just paint Landscaping. Schools. <laughs> that's, that's and you only have to work during the summer. <laughs> Alrighty. So, any other questions? We have a roll call vote, please, Mr. Wolf. Ms. Olson. Yes. Ms. Albright. Can you vote no? No. Mr. Miller. Yes. Mr. Strobel. Yes. Yeah. Mr. B. Scott. Yes. Mr. Wolf. Yes. Mr. J. Scott. No. Mr. Rathgate. Yes. Motion passes 6 2. Alrighty. Let's see. That takes care of item 11. Uh, let's see if I can figure out where I'm at these days. Let's see here. Okay. So we're back on page 8. Now we have uh, with amendments 12. C. Uh, yeah, so it's still A through C, right? As, as amended. A through C. Um, so, uh, since our solicitor is not here, uh, any uh, perhaps our longtime member of uh, the administration that might down the end here, Mr. Small, might have some input. Uh, do I have to abstain for a volunteer uh, for, for Caitlin Rathkeb? <laughs> no compensation at all. That's right. <laughs> well, there you go. All right. Do I have a motion for uh, items 12A through C as amended? So moved. Mr. Wolf, do I have a second, please? Second. Mr. B. Scott? Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Thank you, Mr. Strobel. Okay. <laughs> Way to come in. It's a volunteer district. A volunteer district wide. And then uh, item 13. Uh, approving some minutes. Motion, please. I'll make a motion. Mrs. Olson, I have a second. Second. Mr. Wolf. 
Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Under old business, can we bring back the front of the high school? Uh, it's not on there, but we probably want to vote on that separately, so yes, we can. Uh, we did table last meeting the high school remodel at the front entrance entrance way. So, uh, I did we get any further information? Casey, the front of the high school. So we I'm can. Contact with them all day today. And I, I don't. I call them again at six o'clock, and I still don't get it. So, so our, I, I think our our options are um, either either A, we we move forward with a not to exceed number again, or or B, we might be forced to have a special voting meeting. Uh, as Mr. Wolf shaking his head, no. <laughs> Well, those are the only two, only two options I have. Either we vote, we vote uh, to do it uh, not to exceed, or have to come back to do a special voting meeting once we get all the information. You have another option? We have a meeting and we do that by email. Can't vote by email. It's got to be public. I guess we could come back, but what what is the to have it completed by the start of school? When would the project actually have to start kicking off? The real issue is the doors um, to get them by the start of school. So we can definitely get the construction completed, everything painted, and all that stuff done ahead of time. Um, we are not relocating the secretary's countertop so the office can stay intact as it is. Um, and can start school next year the way we've been operating school as of today. Um, so we can definitely operate. It's just not ideal. That's all. Do we have a final number for the doors? Final number for the doors is 25,690. That is a total of 10 doors. That's the six inside lobby doors and four doors and frames that I need for the uh, uh, office. So I understand the, the, the issue with the inside doors is they do not lock properly. I cannot re reuse any hardware on those, so I would need new door closures, new pack bars, new everything. Uh, uh, SJ Thomas, as, as well, was uh, asked to replace the front concrete sidewalk and the handrails as part of this project. That cost us $17,448.78. And then I have a budget of six thousand dollars in for Pagoda Electrical to run the new phone, IT, network cabling, electric, and so on and so forth in the space. We are going to need a small amount of furniture to properly uh, uh, furnish the two principals' offices because of the reconfiguration we're having table and chairs. We have to get small tables and chairs to fit. Roughly about two to twenty-five hundred. Two thousand to twenty-five hundred for those, and there again, I'm just waiting on the perennial number and about all floors. So, so um, again, right now we're at forty-three, fifty, about fifty-three, fifty-four thousand dollars. But the the key the key generator for this um, for the project to get completed is to have the doors on order as soon as possible. So I, that, I guess that's your third option, Mr. Rathka. If if we're uncomfortable with going with a not to exceed until we have a final number. Um, then we also could vote on the twenty, roughly twenty-five thousand dollars to get the doors on order, and then revisit uh, at a later date in July to approve the, the balance of the funds. And just to let you know, those inside doors of the high school lobby should be replaced anyway. We're starting to have some failures of equipment on those. Uh, we've made some. Not the best repairs, but repairs to keep them operating. So you know, that, that's that's it's not going to be a wasted amount of money. This is what I'm saying. It's it's when 
whether you do it now or do it next year, they're going to have to be replaced by the next year. Last week, last week when we met, so long ago, one week ago, um, when um, I believe Kay, Casey, Casey was here um, to provide that little bit, bit of uh, color that he, that he just filled that out with, um, I was uncomfortable about voting on a blanket number having only seen three lines. Um, he's actually provided a little bit more information. Um, I would be comfortable making an informed vote, and I don't, and even last week, I'm aware that the work needs to be done. You know, uh, I was not saying that I thought that it was uh, without value, that, that job. I know it needs to be done. Um, I just didn't last week feel comfortable voting without any information about what the breakdown was. I, I, I totally I, agree. And, um, but I, I would, I don't know how anybody else feels, but I would be comfortable making that vote tonight. So uh, if I remember correctly, well, was, a, was it was a not to exceed eighty thousand? Was that was that the motion? I don't know how everybody else feels, but that I would be comfortable. Yeah, that doesn't seem high. I agree. I agree. I mean, it may not be. What's just from my description? What's the last? What's the last part we're waiting on? That's going to bring it up to eighty thousand. Floors in the uh, arena is the construction general GC contractor. Those are the two numbers you're waiting for. So then this doesn't give the fifty-two or seven anything. Well, I understand too. The, those prices they gave you are individual POs being provided to each contractor individually. So if we use, let's say, the KPN or a CoStar's contract um, to do this project, you would have one GC who is going to get a markup of, of all of those items. So we can either do individual POs as long as they're all CoStar's vendors and pre approved vendors. Be a prevailing rate job because the total cost of the job is over $25,000. We can do it that way, or we can do it under a GC kind of contract, which then you have additional markups of those prices for that GC. Um, KPN's markups are anywhere between 25 and 30 percent after everybody who manages the accounts gets their piece. So, so I, I guess the question is is this a, a project that we can? Do we need a general contractor, or is this something that we feel comfortable managing with the with the with the POs? I have no problem taking care of it. I, I, I have no problem managing the project. Uh, that's, that's not a problem at all. It's just a matter of what um, our solicitor will require us to do. Uh, if we can do it all through individuals, POs, or, or one large PO. So we we, we could be we could be. 10, 15,000 under the, not to exceed, potentially. That's the goal. Possibly, yes. Again, maybe the motion could be read that uh, for the high school reconfiguration, um, I guess we ta you tabled it from last week, so high school re reconfiguration not to exceed 80,000 pending solicitor review. You comfortable with that one? Do I have a motion for that? So moved. Mr. Wolf, second, please. Second. Second, Mr. B. Scott. Uh, roll call vote, Mr. Wolf. Mr. Strobel? Yes. Yeah. Mr. B. Scott? Yes. Mr. Wolf, yes. Mr. J. Scott? Yes. Ms. Olson? Yes. Ms. Albright? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Ratke? Yes. Uh, any public comment and any items before we um, move on to our next uh, piece of business? Uh, Mrs. Olson, if you'd like, I think uh, we're at the point now, or if you'd like to depart. Can I say one thing? Absolutely. I just wanted to say to everyone that um, uh, the board and the board members are Um, and they'll be on their way on. They'll be on their way on. Uh, I think it, on Thursday, and so uh, they'll be competing as a team and individually. So over the next.
I apologize, Mrs. Olson. I buckled to the under the pressure. I did have that written <laughs> written down, but it, uh, all the agenda edits. I, I apologize. So thank you, thank you for backing me up there. And if you uh, do, you have the number. If you do want to call back in once you're on the road, okay. Thompson. Is he projecting? Do, do I do I need to move? Uh, I don't think so. No projector? No oh, good. Okay. That's the, the complete, absolute gouge and rip off that we just agreed to. I didn't agree to it. You got to open up the doors and paint the business? Seriously. That assumes 24 hours of labor per room. It's 1300 by the way. I said 1300 Oh, I think you said 12. 1299 1299 Cool. Yeah, pre prevailing wages. I rounded up. Prevailing wages is definitely... Uh, <laughs> I didn't hear you say Prevailing wage is what makes it 25000 If you were charging $30 an hour, it would be 15000 you know, That's why it's prevailing wage, because the First of all, it says it's estimating 24 hours of labor per week. Mm -hmm. The reporter is still here. The reporter is still here. Yeah. Three guys. Okay. So one room. I thought I would uh, begin with the end in mind. If you'll turn to page three on the handout, uh, see the drawings that I'm going to that I'm sharing with you. I'll leave these with you this evening. Uh, these are a breakup of the uh, masonry restoration numbers that Whitmer Restoration prepared on May 2nd at $1.946 million. And uh, the question was, well, how can we break this up in a way that we could make it smaller or break it into pieces that are affordable and extend it over a period of time? And um, I reminded the board at the May 14th meeting that these are construction dollars and don't include uh, what is commonly referred to as soft costs for so things like fees for professional services, uh, design and construction contingencies, printing, and uh, uh, legal costs, financing. Uh, that 23% is about $2.4 million total. Uh, you'll see on each of these sheets a breakout based on areas of the building. So going back to the first page, uh, phase one started with the, we're proposing to look first at the areas that we identified through our uh, field analysis as having the most obvious problems. These are the areas that we conducted testing. So on phase one, it is essentially the gymnasium at Birdsboro and the east facing wing. These are the two bump outs on the elementary rooms where we've had particular problems on these two bump outs. Um, and I broke out cost for this based on roughly based on the amount of area included on these facades. So you'll see one, two, three, four facades of the gym. So it's the south facing wall of the gym that faces the playground, that's the big high wall, and then the back of it and the two ends. And uh, I would recommend that we start there because those were the worst of the brick high areas. So there were some 
I think that we could learn as we go along on the project. So certainly a consideration here is uh, to step into this project and if you want to break it into phases, that we would do that in a way where we would identify what we think is probably the worst and examine as we go along and then adjust our thinking on scope in other areas of the building. So if these were the worst and only areas that need to be restored, we should learn that when we get into the project and then uh, adjust the scope of work as we move forward. Can I ask you a, a quick question? Sure. Do we, do we have a, like a high level breakdown of like how much of this is labor versus materials versus the ancillary fees and stuff you mentioned? Like just not, you know, not a line by line. It's but overwhelmingly labor is they're taking pieces of the building yeah. apart and putting them back together. They did the so ballpark a percentage of this. practically no material, just mortar. So, so like, what would be your estimate on how much of this is labor? Oh, I'm sure it's 80%. 80% of the total bill? Yeah. We just added 23% to the answer. Yeah, 23% is uh, a, uh, uh, we would cut, we would, up, update the estimate as we go along. So it's our, uh, you would get a fee proposal to put together competitive bidding documents. And once we put the documents together, uh, we would eliminate any design contingency at that point. So we would still recommend that you keep uh, five, five to seven percent uh, construction contingency on a project like this, because uh, once we get into the wall and open it up, you could find other things inside the wall. That's um, part of the risk of pulling apart the building. So that five to seven percent is included in the 23 uh, percent. The second area would be the east-facing facade of the three-story classroom wing plus the area over the library. So the Mason recommended that we hit these areas like the back of the gym and the two sides of the gym and the north end of that three-story classroom wing because they sit over roof, lower roofs and uh, we're concerned that water is getting behind the wall and getting underneath those roof areas. So we want to fix that in the short term. So other considerations on phase one uh, first is whether you do any of this. As uh, someone asked the question last time, well, what can we do to just seal up the building in the short term? That would be to replace all of the existing sealant joints. So all of those uh, sealant joints that are dried and cracked and open, I would replace those immediately. And any areas where we're missing mortar so there were several areas where the brick has obviously uh, cracked or broken mortar. I would replace that immediately and try and keep as much water out of this building uh, for next winter as possible and buy more time to uh, make longer term decisions on this building. Because that's the other thing is if the board was ready to make a decision on the long term disposition of the building, then I think it would be, you could put some of these bigger expenditures into the context of uh, uh, cost and benefit. By the time we get into the main facade is we're into a lot of windows. So these windows can be replaced at any time. So you can do the masonry restoration around the existing windows and then you can still replace the windows later. But in a renovation of the building, uh, once you start pulling apart masonry like this, is we should consider at that time window replacement. Also, uh, I know that you're looking down the road on this building to replace the unit ventilators and upgrade automatic temperature controls. This facade is peppered with louvers. There were louvers on the road. And uh, the mechanical system that we've been talking about for this building would eliminate all of those louvers and bring in the fresh air through a unit on the roof that would distribute fresh air and dehumidified air from a dedicated outside air system that would be mounted on the roof. Uh, so we could uh, eliminate a, 
a lot or all of the louvers on these facades with the windows, and that would also, uh, I think, improve the appearance of the building, but it would eliminate a lot of places where water can get in. Mr. Thompson, so if you're replacing louvers, is that with more window, or is that brick? brick. So, so it'll be actually be, be, new, be new brick. Yeah. And the uh, mason identified a uh, Glengarry brick is uh, the source for this brick is a nearby brick plant. And uh, Glengarry still produces this brick. We think that we can match it closely. All sizes, the big, the big ones, the 8x8s, and the regular size brick. We think we can match it closely. All right, so that's, those are the, the first two areas. The total for the gym was 403. That includes 23% of soft cost. The classroom wing, east side and north side, uh, 550,000. The second phase is essentially the rest of the classroom wing. So the classroom wing on the west side, on the back side that faces the chillers, uh, it's similar to the east side and then include in that second phase would be the end that faces the uh, playground in the back and the uh, library section in the front. And the total on the second phase it's about 31 percent of the area of the building that would be 742,000. Uh, and as I said before, uh, one of the reasons to do this with, start with the ones that we have the most concern is I think we can learn as we go along, is uh, are we introducing cost into the project that we could save in later phases? Then the third phase are the single story low areas, everything that <coughs> remains. Uh, these are the easiest to get to. They require very little scaffolding and they uh, go all the way around the building. So here's the front entrance, the canopy, the uh, area at the front of the cafeteria. These are all north facing. Uh, this is the side of the cafeteria that faces the bus parking lot. Uh, the retaining wall, there's a freestanding wall back by the loading dock. And then this is the area back on the south facade between the gym. This is where the chillers sit. This, this is kind of behind the office. And uh, the total cost is 694, 694,000. Again, including soft costs. And other considerations here, I did want to say is, uh, I know that you have identified uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars in potential pavement costs at this school, and uh, unit ventilator replacements, and automatic temperature control upgrades. Uh, the project, in my mind, uh, is a comprehensive renovation project if you intend to retain this project. And I did want to point out, uh, for those of you who are students of the legislature, on May 23rd, the Public School Construction and Reconstruction Advisory Committee released their report uh, recommending that the state uh, lift the moratorium on plan con projects. Uh, we don't expect that to happen for probably another year until the Department of Education can get organized to do such a thing. But uh, I raise that for two reasons. One of them is uh, the project uh, could be done as a plan con project in whatever form that appears. And number two is the legislature is calling for maintenance projects to be uh, split out separately. So things like roof replacements, boiler replacements. Uh, that might be, there might be an opportunity to do some of the mechanical system upgrades and perhaps some of the masonry work through a 
uh, maintenance program funded by the state. Uh, but that's probably a year away before we'll know for sure what that looks like. So, uh, going back to the beginning, uh, if nothing else, uh, we recommend that the school district replace all existing sealant and repoint all missing mortar in the building now. This is probably uh, uh, well beyond what would require competitive bidding. And uh, our, what we would recommend as a first step to go on and do the masonry restoration recommended, I would recommend tackling the gym. Do you have an estimate for this items that you must do? <coughs> the must-do items should probably look at a couple hundred thousand dollars. So that, that would be for the sealant and, and repointing of the missing water? Yeah, because the, the repointing is extensive and the sealant requires, uh, it'll require uh, scaffolding of some sort, lifts or scaffolding. So r r roughly for the sealant and the mortar and the gym, roughly 600000 Half a million. I think what I'm hearing is that the uh, Masons are hungry, that they if we would put this together as a bidding package, you could break it into two parts, bid it so that you could accept one and scrutinize the other. Is uh, if you could get a good price on both together. I think the cheapest way to do the masonry is to do it all at once. Um, I, I just don't. I just don't see uh, until we get into the uh, initial phase of restoration. I think we're going to learn a lot. Um, as we uh, start on the project. So that would, that would be my recommendation. I, I, I just don't think that the, uh, uh, I don't think that we can have this work done this summer completely. So I'm, I'm sorry, can you? We would have to start now. We started now. Yeah. So what, what, so you're. Did this summer. So your recommendation is, just to be clear, what, what are you recommending right now? Well, first of all, I recommend that uh, we replace the existing sealant and report, repoint the missing mortar now, and that we take on the uh, jam as the first phase okay. to get that started. So I would recommend, you know, it's not really phase one, it's half of phase one. It's right. the gym part, restore the gym. Got it. But how is the duration for each of these phases? Uh, it won't take the mason very long. It takes the mason maybe a month or two to mobilize and get the work done. Uh, you might recall that uh, Whitmer uh, came in and did, opened up, uh, probably opened up eight or nine areas in the building, and he had the building repaired and back in uh, original condition within a couple of weeks. He was in, took it apart, took all the pictures, did his analysis, and then put it all back together. So, so if we did everything, if we did everything in the in the recommendation all at one time, we're looking at six months, seven months. No, we we so need to get it done before the winter. We need to get it. Yeah, six, six months from now. The repointing needs to be done. Six months to do all three phases. Yeah, we could do all three phases, but I think that uh, uh, I think if we did all all three phases right now, uh, we could probably get it, get the documents together and get the work done in the fall. But did we, we couldn't get it finished over the summer, but you know, the Masons won't want to goof around with it. They'll want to get the project started and get the work done. But the first, the first step, if I understand here, should the, the building itself should be sealed and repointed the expansion joints replaced. Yeah, we were going to and do, we'll, about, I want to get the water out before right. it freezes. If you do the gym as an example, we don't need to, they'll replace the existing joints and repoint as part of that project. So then we're looking at phases two and three is to seal up those parts of the building that you don't do now, seal those up. <laughs> to keep out as much water as possible so that when you're ready to go back and do other parts of the building that uh, the damage isn't significantly worse than it is today. So what, I mean, all right, so this is a new wrinkle in here. Um, 
<laughs> what would it be to do this for the building, just to, to repoint and seal to keep the water out? So we're, we're not we're not going backwards. What, what would be that cost? I think that you're uh, under two hundred thousand dollars. I use two hundred thousand dollars. I think that is uh, fair for the whole for the whole. Yeah, building. because you've got a scaffold and. He had quite a bit of money, and he had like twenty thousand dollars in here just to mobilize. Well, I don't think you need that much. He hasn't doubled his overhead costs. Like he didn't double his scaffolding and his mobil mobilization. As Whitmer told me, that within our contingency, uh, they can make those those numbers work. If they were bidding this, they could make the numbers work. So. I look at the uh, ceiling and repointing is that we will put together drawings for this and get it competitively bid. It's going to be well over 20000 How long would it take for a contractor? I guess November would probably be your target date when you start, before we start getting freezes. And we'll, how, yeah. If you back up maybe yeah. from October, when how long would the project take when we would this? like to we would like to have a project prepared and ready to uh, construct by the end of August. So it would take so roughly three months. September, October of uh, reasonably warm weather, reasonably good weather to get in and work on the building. Okay, so we we normally don't meet in July. Right. But we do meet in August, and that you're saying that, so you would be, we need to give you direction tonight to prepare the documentation uh, for the competitive bid for that ceiling project and the expansion joint so we could vote on it on August to have the project started for, for uh, September and, and October, is that, is that your? Get, if you could get us uh, authorization to proceed, I recommend that we bid the project in August. Don't don't wait to start the documents. Is start start the documents. I can get you a cost to do the documents. No, I'm just you know I'm working backwards. Is, I'm working I'm backwards from you know when it needs to be completed, I'm when it needs to be started, how long it's going to take the bid, the, the award, when you know to lead back to. Are, are you asking us to make a decision tonight um, to move forward? I just came to present tonight. I'm a, I would. Uh, I just don't have a very good feel for where the board is on this. So I didn't come with an expectation of what you were going to do. So, the, so you're just talking about the $200,000 piece of it. You mentioned the, the gym, the other $300,000. Is that part of this? Do you recommend that you do that now? I would suggest that you put together the documents and bid both of them. See where the Masons are with it. I would put as part of the gym right this the issue we had with <clears throat> how the roof was repaired, so that that needs to get fixed. Is that was that part of the issue with that? Our biggest concern with the gym was the condition of the brick ties. Well, was that be because of the repair they made to the roof that was causing more water I think to? That the uh, water is getting in through the <coughs> horizontal joints at the uh, the horizontal joints where the uh, angle iron holds up it's in three sections when you stand and look at the back of the gym you can see where the brick is uh, deteriorating at the location of two different angle lines i would do the all of the items on whitmer's restoration for the full perimeter of the gym and be done with it so as part of that roughly two hundred thousand dollars what, what percentage of the building then roughly is, is being repointed? Um, well, the, uh, the largest areas that I saw were low on the building, that area. This area on the north the side, there's a lot of damage to the uh, mortar joints along the base of the wall. I think it's exposure to salt. And, uh, that anything that's near the driveway, so there's a lot of low repointing that needs to be done, but there's quite a bit of uh, pop, popped out uh, areas where the brick ties have corroded and expanded and popped out mortar and individual brick ties. 
there's probably some repair work as part of the repointing. <coughs> So, so, was there a percentage then of the building you think that's going to be reported? Well, we'd be the rest, the rest of the building, and you're probably looking at uh, reporting 10 to 20 percent of the facade. I think Whitmer had a uh, an estimate of 50 percent total on the building. I think that includes his uh, work. If you remember, he had a 16-step uh, listing, and he was listing in there repointing uh, 50 percent of the brick. So it, We're it, not talking about repointing 50% of the brick for this. Is you have to do some repointing as you go through each of these sections. Okay, so so that initial $200,000 is not repointing the whole building. It's is that so? So no, what? I think he had a, it was somewhere around four to five hundred thousand of the cost total was in repointing. It's a lot. But irrespective, these are estimates. We would have to competitively bid this. And then you would then you would have the numbers. Well, I mean, in my opinion, I think something needs to be done. I mean we did we did uh, allocate another three hundred thousand dollars for for what Mr. Thompson would, would possibly come back at. I think for me, I would. My personal opinion is to, to uh, and Mr. Mr. Stroll. I won't speak for him since he's the uh, re resident expert. But um, I think keeping the water out and preventing that more damage from occurring would be the natural first step, regardless of what we're what the timing is of everything else. But I think that's what, what I'm hearing is going to have to happen for the building. So my feeling is that we should move forward with. Uh, looking for the bid for the at least at the minimum to seal the building and repoint it and, and replace the expansion joints to protect it. And, and then, if I if I understood Mr. Thompson correctly, he's, he was suggesting going out at least just just if we're going out the bid bid the gym too as a separate a separate bid, but also potentially as a combined bid. So we we speak to have. Two, two separate bids for the gym and then for the resealing, and then also a potential combined. Right? Is that is that what I'm That's understanding? Correct. Yeah. yeah. And that that could be something. I don't know that necessarily you're going to get some costs and savings if they're there doing both, or you know, it will be cheaper. But I think minimally, we should move forward with allocating uh, or moving forward with uh, going out and soliciting bids to have the building sealed. To, I mean, the joints, the expansion joints replaced, and so just so, just so we understand what what's going to be the cost to go out the bid. I'm assuming that you're you're going to put the bid, bid specs together. Is that my? So I'm I'm assuming there's a cost of that. You can sit there myself. <laughs> you can use anybody you want, but I will give you a proposal uh, to do that. Because I spoke with our team today about uh, doing that, and I will go back tomorrow and give them a scope and uh, respond in writing to the school district. All right. Um, Didn't you say around 20000 for that? Did I hear you right? 20000 For the bid process? No. Well, I don't know. I don't know. But you can just say that for now. You can say that. Are you hearing me? Well, apparently. Yeah, because well, I... <laughs> I'll, I'll get you a letter back. I'll get you a letter back. Okay. Uh, anything else to share, share with us, or is any other questions from Mr. Thompson? I'm happy to address any, uh, any other questions that you have. Sure. Any administration questions? Uh, question. This is only for the facade, so anything that we do inside is a whole other. This is only for the facade to keep the building uh, water resistant. Right. We've had and lists of mechanical system and site items, and uh, I know there's a pretty extensive list, and uh, any cosmetic. Uh, upgrades to the interior of the building that is not included. Right. 
So this is basically just seals the building and winterizes it, <coughs> gets it ready for whatever we plan to do in the future with the building. Right. But it sounds like we need to we need to give direction tonight to start that process so the documents can be prepared for Well we, we don't have we don't have a <coughs> A cost estimate what the bid is going to cost us, right? So, okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Jay, yes. Yeah, I, I was wondering if it would be possible for us to wait until maybe Thursday or Friday. I would like to meet Mr. Thompson at the building and walk around with him. My question would be where the relief seal is. It's cracked and water is permeating that area. And all the expansion joints are wide open, so it's kind of like a sieve right now going through there. Um, I'd like to see, you know, the 30% or whatever, 50% of the repointing areas. And so we can take a look at it and have a, you know, a, a discussion where I can actually see something I can't see from this bar here. Not that my opinion is more important, but, you know, I would just get a feel for it so, you know, we can take a look at what we're talking about in terms of total cost to steal the building. And the second phase of that was we talked about was providing recalls in the areas so where the water can get out. Whether we agree on or disagree on, a, you know, whether or not there needs to be a, 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 a piece of backing put in there with a dam on the end of it or not. I mean, for many, many years we put backing in without dams. If you put a weak hole there, water finds the easiest way out. So they didn't hear anything about weak holes um, to let the water back out. Maybe, it, maybe it's in that drawing. I, I just couldn't see it. I, I looked on the PDF. I, I couldn't see it. Um, with my thing. I, I would love to sit down with them for an hour before we spend any more money um, trying to figure out what our costs are going to be. I promise not to waste the time. Okay. Is there a response to that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to. He wants to you know. Well, I think we need to get started on the project and be reviewing the documents. With uh, if Mr. Strobel wants to uh, review documents as we go along, we'll walk the building together. We'll look at the documents, make sure that we have the right scope. Okay. So, so but you'll yeah, yeah. So you, you'll you'll put a, a package together then. What? Yeah. The, yeah okay. But I'm I'm also going to give you a proposal for this first phase. Right. Okay. Is uh, you know I understand that you want to get the building sealed up, and I'm all in favor of that. Okay. So we'll, we'll wait to hear from you what uh, potentially the cost of the bid package is, and um, by Monday. Yep. And uh, you know while you're back in Harrisburg, if you want to get them to shake the plan con free, I I don't, I don't have much optimism, but maybe yeah, maybe you're better than that than me. So. I, agree. <laughs> uh, I, I, have, I have one question. What happens if we don't get it done by winter? Uh, well, you know, it's been through several winters in the condition that it's in. The building does not have the right flashing in it. It doesn't have the right sealant. It went through this last winter every year. It freezes, it pushes a little more, it freezes in place, and then it gets the gaps get bigger. So. That's the reason that we want to get the water out, is it just gets a little worse every year. If you came back in five years, it would be a little worse, a little worse, a little worse. So we're trying to, I, th I think we want to, uh, I, I will just end this with a story. Is about 15 years ago, uh, I did a, a comment to the people in Wilkes-Barre about one of their high schools. It had some serious masonry problems. They were a little different than this, but still they were serious masonry and they just couldn't decide and they let it go let it go let it go and eventually stuff started falling off of the building so if you go see myers high school today it's got scaffolding all around it because they just couldn't figure out how to get the cost together and over time the stuff just it will just push to the point where these some of these brick ties will fail and you'll get like a section of brick will fall off of the building and you know is that going to happen this year i do not know and that was a caution that we got from the structural engineer is you look at it and you think it you know what's wrong with this it, it doesn't look that bad but the brick ties are corroded so it's 
it's the part that you can't see is the part that will catch you eventually. You, you just something else, Kevin? No, I'm, I'm, I'm good. When the engineer was there, I asked if there was any evidence whatsoever in any, any place. So I wanted him to point it out. And I would go out and drive out and take a look at it where the wall looked like it was expanding. And he clearly said not one spot. So, you know, it's, I just, I don't, I, I understand that somewhere in parts of the world they had a hor horribly damaged brick building and it decided to deteriorate. Um, you know, if, if we caught all the joints and pointed up where those relief steel is, you'd keep a large percentage of the water out. And we're not going to have extensive damage if we don't get this done, like, right away. So I think we need to take a minute and take a deep breath and say, let's take a look at this and intelligently make a decision based on cost. Because that cost does matter. If we had endless money, it would be not a problem. We could restore the building to new. It would be lots of money, but we could do it. I think we have to walk down the lane instead of run. That's all. I, I don't think it's close to being horribly falling apart. Okay. Any other comments? Okay. Thank you for coming out. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Thompson. Thompson. Any other uh, board items we missed at all? Forever hold your peace until hopefully August. We we'll have a motion to adjourn. Second. All right.